Welcome. I'm Dr. Neil Stevenson from the Center for Advanced Management Development. In this online training, I want to give you my most valuable business asset for free. It's the Management Mastery Model. I established the Center for Advanced Management Development in 1991 as a result of my doctoral research and I introduced the Distance Learning Edinburgh Business School MBA degree to Sub-Saharan Africa and I designed, developed and ran as a joint venture with Natal University a blended learning management development program. The Management Mastery Model gives you seven proven steps to mastering management. They're easy to remember, easy to learn, easy to apply, and very, very powerful. The Management Mastery Model is producing amazing results at all levels of management in North and South America, in Europe, Africa, and Asia. It's been translated into French and, and into Spanish. The Management Mastery Model is being used by individuals small and large organizations across the whole spectrum of the business sectors. It's been chosen by the Gordon Institute of Business Science, the premier business school in Africa, as the model used for their own internal staff development. Other universities, large multinational donors, fast-moving consumer goods, um, financial services, educational institutions, um, parastatals, semi-government departments, manufacturing organizations, hospitals, and a whole lot, lot more. What if I were to tell you that there was a management model that would enable you to become more and more efficient and effective, but in order to use it, you'd have to le learn 27 different things and you'd have to apply them all of the time. Well, that might be a little bit daunting. But part of the genius of the management mastery model is that you only have to remember three things at a time. And all of us can remember three things. It combines a project triangle because it breaks things down into different tasks and most things can be broken down into tasks which make up projects. And the project triangle is embedded in the management cycle. And by combining those two in a particular way, leads to excellence. So let's start with the project triangle. Remember I said you only have to remember three things. Well this is the first of those three things. Start with the results. Begin with the end in mind. Then from those results, in order to achieve those results, you need resources and the whole thing happens over a period of time. There are deadlines, there are starting times, and their milestones and checkpoints along the way. We'll go into each of those in a moment, but for now remember I said you only have to remember three things. Well here's the first three. Results, resources and time. Begin with the results that you want, what resources do you need to achieve them, and how long will it take you. This is the first step of the Management Mastery Model. Results. So for results, you only have to remember three things. Remember, you only have to remember three things, results, resources, and time. Now, for each of those, you remember three things. Results, short-term, medium-term, and the end results. What is the end result that you want to achieve? The final outcome of the project, the impact that you want to achieve. What is the medium-term um, result that you want to achieve? And then what is the short-term? What's the next thing that you need to do in order to move towards the direction that you want. You can also divide these up uh, depending on the time scale of the project. It could be a short-term project, could be a longer-term project. If it's a longer-term project, the end result might only be achieved over several years, and that will be the final result of the project. Um, the medium-term result might be uh, an annual uh, goal that you have set, and the short-term result might be um, it might be a monthly result that you're aiming for. And each of those builds into the other one. On the other hand, a smaller scale project might uh, have an end result in a month, and the medium term might be in a week, and the short term might be today. 
The short-term results in turn might be divided up into particular tasks or activities. So again, there's only three things you need to remember about results in short-term, medium-term, and the end result or long-term results. Step two in the project triangle is resources. Once you're clear about the results you want, short, medium, and long-term results, then you need to think about what resources you need in order to achieve those results. And for resources, there are three categories that you just need to remember. Again, only three things, human, physical, and financial. Human resources is the time of the people that are needed, the different skills, the number of people. Physical resources is anything like computers and buildings that need to be um, uh, occupied for venues or cars or any other physical resource that is necessary to achieve the basic materials that are being used for construction or whatever it is that you need, uh, physical resources. Financial resources, of course, is money. That's your budget. You've got to have the money in order to get the physical resources and to pay the people. So three categories of resources, human resources, physical resources, and financial resources. Again, three things you need to remember. The third step in the project triangle is time. After you've clarified your results and defined the resources you need to achieve them, you need to decide when the project is going to start, when it needs to finish, and at what points along the way, way you're going to report your uh, progress. So start, reporting, and finish. Three things you need to remember about time. Very often time is divided up into the convenience uh, reporting periods. So short term might be monthly reporting. Medium term might be um, annual reporting or quarterly reporting and the end result will be the final report after you've uh, finished the project. So those are convenient reporting times, but it depends on the nature of the project. Uh, usually the reason why we report at those times is because we have all the information available, it's all collected at one specific point in time. Other projects might have milestones or checkpoints at which um, you decide in advance that you're going to report back to key stakeholders. Most things have a desired or, or required finishing time, a deadline. So again, three things to remember about time. Start the finish and when you report in between. So that's a pro project triangle. It's actually very easy to learn and remember. And I am repeating myself a lot and there's a particular reason for that. It's to help you help it to stick in your memory. Again, three things to remember, results, resources, and time. Very easy, start with the results you want. What resources do you need in order to achieve that? And how long is it going to take? When do you start? When do you finish? When do you report? Uh, what results do you want short term, medium term, and long term? And what human, physical, and financial resources do you need? Every project, no matter how small or how big it is, has three, three dimensions to it. Whether it's landing a person on the, on the moon, that's broken down into lots of lots of little triangles, each one building up to make a great big epic journey. Or the smallest thing, you need a result, you need resources, and you need time in order to achieve it. But the real value of the project triangle comes in what I, comes in in what I'm going to show you next, and that is things don't always work out the way you plan. Have you ever had that? You plan something and things don't work out quite the way you plan. Something else unexpected crops up. What do you do then? And the project triangle tells you exactly what you can do. You're never at a loss for something to do because you can just look at the project triangle, think of the project triangle, and you will have an immediate answer to the potential solutions to your project problem. So let's take a hypothetical project. 
let's say the result we want is to manufacture or make two objects. Let's call them widgets to be original. And these two re uh, widgets require two people. And those two people will take two weeks in order to make two widgets. Two widgets, two people, two weeks. What happens now if one of those people leaves or goes off sick or leaves the organization or has been reassigned by somebody up the chain to a different project and now you only have one person, what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you can do is to try and find another person. So if you can find another person to replace that person, then you're back to where you were, two, two, two. But if you can't find another person, there are two things you can do. Looking at the triangle, you can look at the results and say, well, if I've only got one person I'm, and, and I have to finish it by the deadline in two weeks' time, there's no choice about that. The only other thing I can do is renegotiate the results and say, well, I've only got one person, I've got to finish in two weeks' time, and the result I have to achieve, I can, I can only achieve is I'm going to produce one widget. So that's this particular view of the project triangle. One person produces one widget, same time, two weeks. The other thing we could do is saying, well, we have to produce two widgets, but the time is not the critical element. It's not so critical that we have it by the deadline. What's most significant here is that we have to come up with the result of two widgets. But I've only got one person, so I then have to renegotiate the deadline, renegotiate the time and say, I will produce the two widgets that are required, but I only have one person uh, to do it. And therefore, it's going to take me four weeks in order to achieve that. Most often, of course, you'll look at the triangle and try and make some sort of combination. So let's say, for example, I can get somebody else to help me, but they're only going to be able to give half of the time that the person who's missing would have given. I've got one and a half people. That's my resource. I'm still going to achieve my two widget result because that's uh, not negotiable. And now I have to go back and say, well, it's going to take me a little bit longer. It's going to take three weeks because I don't have all the resources I need to achieve the results that are required. That one and a half might be just putting in overtime yourself. So you might end up by working after hours or weekends and you still would take a longer time. It still take the three weeks to achieve the results of the two widgets. Now, the combination would be that you renegotiate. You say, well, I'll have the one widget completed, but I'll have the other one half completed. Uh, I'll still do it in three weeks. Uh, I'll need the extra half, uh, half a person, or well, not half a person, but I'll need the time of half the time of one extra person, um, or I'll need to put in some extra time myself. And um, I'll still only be able to achieve it in three weeks but I'll produce one and a half widgets and the other half will have to follow afterwards. So this is how the project triangle can help you when you run into difficulties. Obviously, we're using a very simple example here, but the same principle applies whatever the particular situation might be. Whatever result you, are, you, you want to achieve can only be produced with resources and it can only be produced in time. So you need to be able to juggle them around. And this gives you a very, very easy to think of way of negotiating and, um, and, and coming up with, uh, with a, an answer to the problem that you're facing. It also presents you with a very meaningful way in which you can negotiate with your, your superior. You can explain things to your subordinates and your colleagues and you can negotiate with suppliers and customers. Um, people will understand if you give them the reasons and what you're doing in order to try and resolve the situation. That's the project triangle. Very easy to understand, very easy to remember, and very easy to apply, and yet extremely powerful in, in, in getting to the results that you need and dealing with difficulties that that occur along the way.
Now we move on to the second part of the management mastery model, the management cycle. And again, here there are three things to remember. Plan, act, and learn. Fortunately, these three make up a very convenient and easy to remember acronym, PAL, Plan, Act, Learn. Management is an ongoing process. It's not just a project, and there's a cycle to the management process. It can be broken down into these three, three elements. So let's look at them one at a time. Step four in the process, in the model, is plan. Notice the red arrow that comes from learn. Our plan is informed by what we've learned from the previous project or projects. And also there's a blue arrow that leads from plan to action because that's the purpose of our plan is to lead to action. What do we plan? How do we plan? Well, here we recognize something very familiar. There's a little triangle there and it's got an RRT, Results, Resources and Time. And that's the answer to what we need to do when we're planning. We look at our project triangle and we say, what results do we want? Um, and we look at the short-term, medium-term, long-term results, life of project results. We break those results down into specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time-bound results. We look at using the SMART acronym. And we look at the resources we need, the, the people, how much time they are, what skills we need, when we need them. We look at the physical resources and we look at the budget and the money that we need for it. We look at when it needs to start. We look at when we need to report on it. And we look at when the deadline is for us to accomplish the whole thing. And that's what we plan. It's not difficult and we know exactly what it is we need to include in our plan because we use the project triangle for that particular step. Step five in the management model and the next step in the management cycle is act. Remember three things, plan, act, learn. And we'll see that there's an arrow leading from planning because that leads to the action and from the action, it leads to the learning stage. Again, here is the triangle that we're familiar with. Results, resources, and time. And that's what we need to check and monitor and adapt when we're in the ACT stage. So again, we'll look here. We, when we come to the ACT, we take our human resources and we allocate them and we allocate the money and the physical resources to particular activities and we monitor the short-term, medium-term and long-term results that we get from those activities. We track and steer. This, the management cycle looks like a steering wheel and as we travel along on the road we need to, make a, um, we need to adapt and, and change our direction um, as we're going along. So we may be heading from one place to another. We know more or less what direction we to, need to go. But as we're traveling along in the car, uh, we'll find that the car tends to veer to one side of the road or the other, and we have to make corrections. Similarly, in the act, in the action or implementation phase, we need to make adaptations. And the triangle, again, tells us how to do that. If we're short of resources, we need to adjust the results and the time. If we're um, not achieving the results, we need to add more resources or extend the time. If we're running behind time, we need to add more resources to achieve the results or we need to re renegotiate a lower result. So here again, in the implementation phase, in the action phase, we use the project triangle to help us adjust like we are, like we do when we're steering a car down the road. Step six in the management mastery model is to learn. It's the last of the three things we need to remember about the management cycle. I see again the familiar 
green arrow leading from action to learning. And learning is the most neglected aspect of the management cycle. Cycle. I see again the familiar green arrow leading from action to learning. And learning is the most neglected aspect of the management cycle. Here again we find the familiar triangle with results, resources and time. Step six in the management mastery model is to learn. It's the last of the three things we need to remember about the management cycle. I see again the familiar green arrow leading from action to learning. And learning is the most neglected aspect of the management cycle. Once again, we see the project triangle with results, resources and time. And this informs us what we need to focus on when we come to learn. We always begin with what went well. Appreciative inquiry teaches us that it's best to begin by focusing on the positive. So we acknowledge those who've contributed to achieving the results. Then we look at what could be better, what could be different, what could be left out. And these lead, lead us to our key learnings. We, we inquire about the results, the resources and the time and go into detail for each one of those things. This enables us to learn in ways that will inform our future planning. We're better able to estimate uh, whether the results can be achieved with the resources and the time available. We'll be able to make more accurate predictions of our needs, our resource needs and our time needs and the result will be better planning, better implementation, action and a better overall project. So that's six out of the seven steps of the management mastery model. Let's just recap. Remember three things, plan, act, learn, PAL. And within each of those three things, there is the project triangle, results, resources, and time. And for each of the things in the project time, triangle, there are three things to remember. For results, it's short, medium, and long-term. For resources, it's human, physical, and financial. And for time, it's start, finish, and reporting in between. Step seven is where I justify the claim that this model can lead, lead to mastery. It's where you achieve excellence. And that's why I put it at the center of the, of the model with an E which has got a little bit of a halo around it so that it looks um, as special as it deserves. What is excellence? Excellence is a combination of efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency is doing things right, the right resources in, the right results out. And effectiveness is doing the right thing. So for example, if you're uh, task is to cut down a tree, um, then it's more efficient to use a chainsaw than it is to use an axe. But if you chop down the wrong tree, then it doesn't matter how efficient you are, you're not being effective. Being effective is knowing which tree to chop down. And the ma management mastery model is based on a learning cycle. So every time you do it, you're getting better and better. Uh, you see the arrows go round and round and round the management cycle. And within the management cycle, there is the project triangles. So every time you plan, you get better at the planning. You plan better because you've learned from the previous uh, experience. If you plan better, you implement better. And if you get better and better at your implementation because you're learning, then it feeds into the next cycle. And every time you learn, you get better, 
you know, you know more, you get better, you implement more. And as you do this repeatedly, the end result will be excellent. The end result will be mastery. You will master management. If you consistently apply this model, I can assure you that you will end up with management mastery. I hope you found the management mastery model interesting. I have no doubt at all that if you actually use it and use it consistently, you will, as have thousands of other managers, get a huge amount of benefit from it. The Centre for Advanced Management Development is a non-profit organisation. We do, however, offer you some additional information if you want to learn more about management. We do have online courses. We charge for those, but the proceeds of those go to um, assist with our non-profit activities in the health, education and government services sectors and non-profit sectors. Our sister company, Key Business Dynamics, uh, which is myself and my colleague James Reader, who's been, uh, we've been working together for the last 25 years. Um, we provide high level consulting, strategic planning, change management, executive coaching, um, and training of middle managers in a wide variety of topics. We have over 100 courses available. Um, typically two to three day courses or two to five day courses uh, which we customize depending on the needs of our clients. So if you want additional information um, uh, please uh, click on the link at the end of this uh, uh, this online training uh, which will take you to a page where you can select the option that's appropriate for you. Um, we do provide Skype coaching as well. And um, if you want to investigate or find out more about the uh, consulting services that Key Business Dynamics offers, we'll provide a 20 minute free Skype coaching session to help you assess your needs and see whether we can help you. Look forward to chatting with you on future webinars. Um, this is Neil Stevenson saying goodbye for now.